Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Steven Lefebvre, and we're live answering your questions about all the snowboards that you could want. So here's how this goes. You got questions, get them in the chat box wherever they appear. Super chats, get a spin of the wheel, giving away a set of goggles. Also, we got a voicemail from Slim Whitman that came in at like 9.30 this morning. It was really creepy. He's either giving his child up for adoption or adopting another child. I'm not sure, but either way, it was still just as creepy. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this week's top five list with the party boards. Next week is powder boards. Then there'll be another one or two after that. And then we'll kind of do some more for that stuff. If you're listening in on SoundCloud or if you haven't yet, you should listen to us on SoundCloud because, well, why not? And uh, I know we got a few super chats already, so we got to play a little bit of catch up. When we hit like 75, 80 people in here, I'll play the Slim Whitman voicemail till then. But uh, let's. Uh, Let's see what we got up here. No, I'm skipping a few here. So, oh man, hmm. I feel like we're missing some stuff. Anyways, we got letters. Local resort got some snow this week. Uh, word on the street is next week we could be snowboarding in Colorado. So, uh, next on super chat gets a spin of the wheel. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay. Uh, okay, James asked, did you get a Rocker or Camber Pathfinder to review? Excited for the review either way. Uh, Camber. It was Camber. RIP to L. David's window. Our moderator's window got smashed out on his car and they stole his skateboard. Poor David and his skateboard. But yeah, a bunch of resorts were getting snow this week. I saw Whistler got some. Seymour. Seymour, they're blowing at Copper, uh, snowed up at Mount Baker, Mount Hood. Um, it's coming. Winter's coming. Uh, yeah, so we got Story 3333 letting everyone know that Copper's snow guns were fired up today, which is good. And fire cures all. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, God. Yellow backpack guy. If I win the goggles, I'll donate them to Slim. It's bad enough he graffitied my snowboard. Slim was here. Hashtag spin for Slim. You lose. You were so close to getting the goggles, but you lose. Okay. Uh, let's see. Adam Me asks, any tips on dialing in your stance? Similar to boot fit as it's unique, but any tips? Put your board flat on the ground, stand on the inserts, and then mark where the center of your foot is. Like on the edge, just take like a Sharpie or something or whatever, or just put something down so you know. And then uh, you could also just put your bindings with no screws on and just sort of move them around and figure out what, what feels comfortable. General rule of thumb you want to go a little bit wider than shoulder width. So for most people, it's like 20 and a half to 22 and a half, depending on their height. Um, but yeah, just do it. And then, you know, play with your angles. Just make sure that, you know, if your front foot's angled, you don't want more angle on your back foot. You always want more angle on your front foot than your back foot or equal angle on the front foot in the back foot. That's it, you know, and uh, don't ride hard boots. And that that's kind of my, uh, uh, so, yeah. Well, let's see. Okay, what else we got here? We got ecologically minded. Thoughts on the snowboard addiction indoor trainer board and training bindings. At all useful for keeping up muscle memory? If not, how about for can RIP Kevin carve it? Uh, I saw Kevin, or maybe it was a ghost. I don't know. He might have been haunting me the other day. Uh, but he, he, maybe he's alive. Maybe he's dead. Maybe he's haunting me. He's got a Euro mullet again. It's like Kevin from like five years ago, Kevin. But Kevin Hub is alive. Uh, thoughts on this indoor trainer? You know, you can get the same thing by taking a skateboard and just nailing some old shoes to it so you can slide in or even just some straps to slide your feet in if that's what you want. But if you want to blow the money, hey, go for it. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, so then we got, uh, let's see. Okay, we got Mark asking, anyone tried the Solomon Ultimate Ride 2122? This guy. There's a review coming. I just haven't scheduled it yet. Uh, reviews are scheduled till the 25th of this month, and I'm going to probably schedule another five to 10 this weekend. So it would go into November, but that'll probably be coming up in that batch that it'll get scheduled. Um, yeah, I wrote it. You can, if you're a member of Angry Snowboard or VIP, you can actually check the written review early if you wanted to. So, oh, okay. Well, we got a super chat from Hamster Cool Bean. Is the Katana or Rome Black Label a better pairing for the Aviator 2.0 for all mountain freestyle? I mean, the Black Label is kind of overkill, but um, the Katana is solid. So if you wanted to go that route, I mean, it'll it'll pair up there. I think there's better bindings that actually match that. Something like, say, like a Nitro Team, uh, Ride C8, even like a Union Atlas would be okay on there. Uh, even the Burton Cartel would be better on that, I think, because just because you lose some of that lateral drive from that ASIM heel cup in there. So you want to make sure that you get everything going in there. Looks like the internet connection might be getting a little sloppy right now. So um, just give it a minute here. Let's see what that does. But yeah, you want to make sure that whatever you get, uh, it it gives you that outward power and everything in there. That's what you really want for that board just because of the way it is. So anyways, let's give you a spin here, bud. Ooh, next non super chat gets a spin. RC5, angry. Do you know what happened to the company Original Sin? Yeah, it was owned by Dina Star and Dina Star pushed it into Dina Star. So Original Sin became Dina Star, and then they pulled the plug. So there you go. And you get a spin of the wheel, too. Oh. Next on Super Check, it's a spin. All right, where were we? Let's see what we got here. Okay. Uh... Theo Flo, any insights on the roads from Summit County to Aspen and Telluride? Well, if you're going from Summit County to Aspen, you take I-70 and you just get off in Glenwood and then drive down. If you're heading to Telluride, you head south until you uh, hit uh, Fairplay, then you take a right and you keep heading south through BV and Salida and on that shit. Cotrip.org. That's the best thing that you could ever look at if you want to know how the roads actually are or aren't. So, um, yeah. There we go. Uh, okay, so we got Brandon Tauscher. Keep grinding, Averin. I don't know what I'm grinding over here. Maybe just my soul. I'm grinding my soul away. Oof, lose a turn. That's a hard one. Uh, let's see. Free Poop Loops wants to spin. I think I owe Theo a spin. You win nothing, and we're going to give Theo a spin because I blew it on that one too, so... Remember to subscribe, people. Remember to subscribe. You want to subscribe? You need to subscribe. Remember to subscribe. Ugh. Uh, okay, where were we? Uh, let's see. Nicholas Schneider with a sp hashtag spin for slim. Ugh. Got 70 people. We're getting close to that Slim Whitman voicemail we got. Remember to eat your muscle cheese. It'll keep you strong when Slim Whitman attacks. Uh, okay, Will Kelly, what do you think about the regular Huck Knife? It's just a softer version of the Huck Knife Pro. It flexes a little easier. It kind of overlaps uh, the villain and the sleepwalker, in my opinion. Like They all kind of just take from each other in there and overlap. So uh, there is a review of that coming. So, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, okay, well, we're just going to, uh, boop. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, next one. DJ Frank, looking to move from the DC Travis Rice boot to the Vans Infused. Thoughts on the Vans brand? 
Vans boots are actually super solid right now. The Infuse has a lot of customization to it. Like you can put in the bars to stiffen it up on the outside and everything. So you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, but yeah, it, best boots, the one that fits your foot. But if the Vans boots tend to run a little bit wider in the forefoot, I do know that, but they are quality. They are solid. Don't worry about those at all. Okay. Ford Phillips, Capita Outsiders or Solomon Huckknife Pro if you had to go with one. Depends what kind of conditions. If I'm more on ice, I'm going with that Outsiders Pro. If uh, it's like Colorado typical conditions, then I'm going with or I'm going with the Outsiders. Uh, if it's typical Colorado condu uh, conditions, then I would go with the Huckknife Pro. It kind of depends. The side cut on the Huckknife Pro does not do as well on ice and stuff. And I think my dog's trying to drink bleach. Baroness, what are you doing? Yeah. Get out of there, you little cock juggler. Okay, uh, we got a super chat from Ivan Drago. Must see mullet Kevin. Ooh, next non super chat gets a spin. Let's see. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay. Actually, this is a good question where to go. And my dog's being an asshole. Give me one second. What do you want? Come on. You want to say hi to everyone? Is that what you want to do? You want to say hi to everyone? Come here. Come here, baby. Come here. You know what's up. Okay. Come here, baby. Okay. Hi, guys. It's Baroness. It's my dog. It's my puppy. She's going to be eight months in another week. So, uh, but yeah, I owe you guys a question here. Where was it? It just disappeared. This is a good one too. Um, oh, it comes from Fruit Poop Loops. I keep getting asked about clicker bindings from customers. Are there any, are they any better than the Burton Step-Ons, please? I also got hired, yay. Come on, out, out. Where are you going? What are you doing? Don't drink that WD-40. Sit, come here, sit. Um, so here's the thing about clicker versus step on. I haven't ridden the clicker yet, but the way it attaches on the bottom, it gives more lateral roll versus because the way the Burton one hits on the ankle, it changes that roll in there. It's really designed to have a more loose feel on there. At the end of the day, tell them to buy some real fucking bindings and not be limited to one option. Like they're going to be limited. Oh, you bought Burton step on, you got DC boots, Burton boots. You got like what? Five options. Maybe. K2, I think you get two options. Like, come on, people. Get your shit together, you know? Like, really get your shit together. So, yeah, that's there's that kind of thing. So, um, did you just fart? My dog just farted on me. So, yeah, anyways, there's that question. Let's give you a spin. Lose a turn. Lose a turn. So... Okay, what else we got here? Okay, we got Super Chat from Osvaldo. Should I get Jones bindings when I find and buy the Aviator 2.0? You think the Burton Cartels would be just fine? I think the Cartels will work with that. I mean, it really comes down to what you want performance-wise out of that board. Um, I know you asked earlier if there was any place around Frisco, Colorado, that has them for sale. The Underground should be getting them in either this week, like today or tomorrow, or maybe next week, I think, because I think they shipped – from Jones. So, uh, and I talked to Andy and he will have a size run of those. So you could always call and probably reserve it. Um, so yeah. Uh, okay. We got Mark looking for a spin. RIP to L David's window. RIP. Okay. Uh, we got, let's see. We got Dubs asking bindings for a 2020 Rome Ravine. Has the Ravine received any changes for the season? I think it got a new shape. Is what they did to it. I, I feel like that's what I read somewhere that got a new shape, but overall it's still the same flex pattern and everything. I don't know. They weren't able to get me one to ride this year. So um, I'm going to try to try to get on one, hopefully in November. So yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Here's here here's the elephant in the room because everyone's 
just discovering this, even though I talked about it months ago. True Love Forever asks, what are your thoughts on Tyrion no longer being on Burton? Who cares? Does that affect your snowboarding? No. Does it affect you buying the product? Maybe. Don't buy their product. It doesn't? Buy their product. 31 years with the company. Okay. And I'm not even upset about the stuff he said. I was like, well, it's stupid shit that he said, but his generation says stupid shit. My generation says stupid shit. The generation underneath me says stupid shit on TikTok. Doesn't fucking matter, right? So we're all going to say stupid shit, own your shit, and do it. But the fact that it took him three years to issue an apology at the same time that contract negotiations were about to come up and they didn't renew his contract, real self-serving. On top of the fact, ask yourself, what has he done for snowboarding lately? Not what has what did he do, but what has he done? Baroness, come here. Come here. Come here. Be a good girl. Sit. Sorry, dog, puppy. Puppy's being annoying. Um, but, you know, ask yourself, what what is he doing? I mean, he's been riding a snowskate for, what, the last 10 years? They put him in a step-on commercial? Cool. They cart him out for a bunch of the old heads, and they all support him? Great. Cool. The old guys love him. I love people that are like, he's the greatest snowboarder of all time. And I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, I can name like five other guys that are still riding that are still doing it. Like, if we really want to talk about the greatest snowboarder of all time, it's Chad Otterstrom. I don't care what anyone fucking says. Dude's like almost 50 and still chucking dubs and still progressing as a rider. Like, that's a guy that deserves it, not someone that was pro and then just disappeared. So, anyways, but you know, the whole Tyria thing. And then, then this goes into Burton. Do you think, do I think Burton's at no fault? I mean, it's a company, it's a bottom line. Their whole marketing campaign and tokenism of hiring every minority rider and making these fucking Lululemon fucking yoga models ambassadors i'm like cool another girl that doesn't fucking snowboard but five days a year <laughs> stick a finger in my butthole i'm stoked really come on so what they did is they cut tyria and they put a whole bunch of minorities and stuff on there and it's like their whole thing. Oh, we're woke and all this shit. At, at this point, I loved that like JP Solberg actually tagged me in something on Instagram about this. And he's like, Burton is snow. Burton claims they're snowboarding. I was like, no, 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 no. Burton is not snowboarding. Let's get this real. They're a fucking multi-season company that handles snowboarding now. They like, you know, and everyone's making this big thing about Tyrier getting shit can but no one talks about jg their board designer being let go like where's jg that dude literally made all the family tree shapes and pretty much every shape that they had there's some weird shit going on over there so you know it's it's one of these things like you look at it and does it affect your snowboarding no after 31 years with the company you'd hope that he'd built a pension or had a retirement plan or something i get it that you we should probably as snowboarders and stuff take care of our people but the dude literally pushes snow skating over snowboarding i'm sorry okay cool you find it fun go fucking snow skate off a fucking cliff dude i don't care i care more about snowboarding anytime i see someone snow skating i'm like god that looks retarded oh you know and people are like ah you should talk about snow skating why i don't fucking like it i don't care for it i want to ride a snowboard that's what i care about the guy's paid to him be the brand ambassador for a snowboard company and yet he's pushing fucking snow skating it's like it, it doesn't matter and you know all these people that are like i'm so upset and like, who gives a fuck like the guys from yes being all bull butthurt about it i'm like you own a snowboard company just put him on your company you literally founded your company because burton dropped you and you didn't know what was next so you started yes i mean you're all ex-burton riders why not just put another one on there? Like, am I the only one that fucking sees this logic and is like, wow, this makes total fucking sense to me right now? You know, like, I don't get it. What? Why are they, like, being so... Hey, what are you doing? Dog's licking herself. Um, And uh, it's, it's just so weird. It's so freaking weird to me. Like, who cares? Like... What has he done in the last five years? You know, like, and I love how they're like, oh, he's all about equality for all. I'm like, dude, dude tried and failed to get the FIS's control away from being the governing body. I, that's great. 
you, you tried, but you didn't succeed and you gave up and moved on and that's it. And that's where we're at. And that's why we get 1440 triple cork mute grabs. I'm sorry, Weedle grabs. Like, okay, I get it. He said some homophobic shit. All right. I've said some homophobic shit. I've said all sorts of weird shit. You got to kind of own when you say stupid shit. But the fact that he owned it three years after the fact, right around contract negotiations, eh, kind of brought it on himself. I mean, hey, there should always you should always understand that there's a shelf life for anything that you do and anything you work at or anything and be like, well, that day's going to come one day where I'm going to be let go or I'm going to be this or I'm going to be that. So, yeah. Anyways. I, uh, I gotta go answer some other questions. Okay. Uh, okay. What do we got here? Okay. Tibby TT. How long can boards last as shop stock? Seen a store selling off old, but new boards for 120 pounds, 2015 models worth the money to piss around on or likely to be warped. And passed it tech wise, unless it was sitting in the sun in the front window of the the shop, cooking, or it's been like twisted or anything. They're usually pretty fine. Like the big thing is just take it off the shelf and put it flat on the floor. And make sure all four contact points hit the same thing. It's just like kind of a warp skate deck effect right there. And uh, you know, that's that's really it. But I mean, for 120 pounds, go for it. Where are those francs? I don't even know. Okay, uh, let's see. We got fresh rancid. Uh, size question. Westmark Rocker 52 or 54 wide. Have a good deal on a 54 wide. 9.5 US, 160 pounds. Uh, you can get away with that 54 mid wide in that. Um, the 52 would be ideal, more ideal for your weight but and your boot size, but you can get away with that mid wide. It's just going to give you more stability in there. Um, that's kind of it. Uh, let's see. We've got the next one, uh, from David Lee battalion bindings. Have you had a chance to review? No, I haven't. I looked at them. They look like old Rome bindings, which is crazy. So, um, with different high backs and straps. So they're definitely Frankenbinders of some kind. Uh, all right. We got a super chat from our boy, Billy Ray Valentine, RIP L stackers adventure, RIP Snowboard Pro Camp plus crew equals kooks. Buckhouse equals kook. Benton equals kook. TJ equals me. Casey is all right, but I unsub. Curated sucks. That is a big PSA from our moderator. Ooh, spin again. You lose. You lose. Okay. Uh, Derek NG. Hey, Avran. Do you know of any places in Denver that have a structure service? Uh, I know the Christie's do, the Christie Sports and stuff. Um, and I saw Evo does the Phantom Cure Station. What is it? And is it any good? That's that uh, no wax solution that's basically an epoxy that you put over the base of your board. I've never used it. I've actually got some, and I'm kind of debating if I'm ever actually going to put it on anything. But that's all it is. It's It's... It's that no wax glide formula that they got. Um, uh, you wouldn't add it to structure or a normal grind. Like once you put that on, you never touch the base again. But if you get a core shot and they fill it, you're going to have the spot that doesn't have it in there. So that's kind of my issue uh, with it. Uh, no, let's see. Adam Kanowski, the twin. The 2019 yes typo the same as the 2021 version with different graphics. No, the core profiles changed in them. Uh, okay, free poop loops. Uh, Brian or uh, Arbor uh, Brian Aguchi Pro versus the Jones Ultra Flagship. Um, two boards in the same category, which is always awesome to see right there. Uh, so the flagship's going to be a little more damp underfoot, uh, and it's going to ride a little different when it initiates a turn, just because the cam rocker profile versus because you got the reverse and the camber profile on that Aguchi Pro, or did they get rid of the reverse? I can't remember. Uh, I think they got rid of the reverse, but I might be wrong on that. But it, it's going to engage different on edge. You've got the grip tech that they put in there. And so that steers more underfoot, but with the serrated edges on the flagship, it kind of changes how it locks in in there. They both are really good. Um, the big question is like, 
the ultra flagship is like almost a grand. It's like, do you want to pay that much for it? That's really where it comes down to. It's like a price thing in there. They're both made in the same factory at least. So you got that going for you. Fire cures all. Okay, we got JE looking for a spin. Ooh, next non super chat gets a spin. S2000 guy, any plans to get on the Dance All Pro? Probably not, because I think that's an Evo exclusive. I haven't seen it anywhere else. Uh, I, I haven't seen my Solomon rep in a while, but uh, when I talk to him, I'll see if he's got one and I might grab it, but I really wouldn't count on me getting in on it. So spin again. Woo, we're going to plug the personal shopper. You got questions. I got answers. There's a link in the description. You can hire me to answer your questions one-on-one. -on -one. All right, we got Jack Ripper with the 666 Super Chat saying Satan loves you all. Next on Super Chat gets a spin. Okay, uh, let's see. Looking for questions here. Uh, Seraphah, hey, angry. If trees are a priority, what's your top pick? Slightly directional, slightly volume shifted with a lot more torsional flex into it. So you're looking at like, for me, my personal favorite right now is the Telus Backslash because I ride a lot of low angle. But if I'm looking for a twin, then I go to the Marhar Lumberjack. Uh, you could also do, let's see what else is out there that would be really solid. I do like the Endeavor archetype for trees in there. You just want to make sure you get the right size appropriate. So um Oh, what else do we got floating around that are good boards for that? Oh, well, the Rosnal Sashimi is also a really good one, too. So there's a few options for you, and we're going to give you a spin of the wheel there. Next on Super Check, it's a spin. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, James asks, curious about this after seeing some of the Amplit reviews. Is it a safe assumption that one size fits all boards are not going to be great for non-standard size boarders, super small or big riders? Exactly. They're not going to be fun. They're not what you want. They don't work the way you want. It's like you end up with like, if you've got weird proportions and you're on like a volume shifted board, you got tiny feet, you're, it's going to be sluggish edge to edge. If you're super heavy and it's super small, but it's not like quite volume shifted, you're overpowering it. You know, it, it, there, there is a happy medium in there, but for the most part, it, it, it's not what you'd think. All right. Well, sir, you're the first one to win a, Sticker pack. So all you got to do is email me info at angry snowboarder.com and you got yourself a small sticker pack. Uh, I know we got some more super chats I got to catch up on. So we got Brandon Tauscher. One more spin for Slimothy Whitman, which we got 133 people in here. So we're going to give you guys a Slim Whitman voicemail. Oh, yeah. Good old Slimothy. This came in at 9 24 a.m. and it's a minute and 35 seconds long. Avery, you heard it speak. Slim Whitman. I'm going to speak with you, Avery. You, you. Hi. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have something to say. I'm being quiet right now, okay? Because, oh, He's adopting another child. Okay, okay, okay. I have a question. I have a question for you. Okay, I'll have to be you fucking hypnose. I let you have a message. Hacking, hacking, hacking. She's very concerned about the whereabouts of Matthew. Okay, I don't think he's at the house anymore. Okay, this is a new week, Clint. This is a new week. A new voice girl. Okay, ask your question. Okay. Okay, now listen. Um, 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 so, 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 I became a subscriber. 
Lush Magazine. Have you heard of this? This is the Lush Magazine. And even I, I have seen that on, on these social medias that other people have received their magazine. I have not, Avery. Now, you must be tied to that magazine. You are too important to still work. Can you please help me? Are you guys to be serious? And they still need the backup situation. Oh, man. So Slim's adopting another child or putting his up for adoption. He got a subscription to Slush Magazine, and he still wants to know where Matt Guff is. It's a busy week for Slimothy Whitman. Whew. Scary. Scary. All right. All right. We got Julian Barajas. What's a good next option to build a board quiver? I have the Captain DOA. I'm more of a carve and dibble dabble in the trees kind of guy. Uh, so you probably want to go with a volume shifted, like carvey cruiser type thing. So you're looking at your Telus backslash, your Kemper Apex, Rosnall Sashimi, uh, Nidecker Mosquito to an extent, something in that range in there. One of those, like I would even a, even like a Super Pig or uh, you could do an Aseco or a Simple Pleasures from K2, something like that would really pair up well with your doa to match that and get you down that road to owning multiple boards so Whew. next on super check gets a spin jeez uh, okay evian mist thinking of picking up some aroma black labels for my k2 alchemist good combo yeah there's better options out there. I mean, as someone that tested that board with black labels, you lose some of that lateral drive on the outside of the binding because of the ASIM wrap. So you'd rather, you, you want something that's going to have a little more power out there. Personally, like, wouldn't be my first choice to recommend, but you can get away with it if you want to. Pray to the altar of snowboarding, people. Pray to the altar of snowboarding. Okay, where were we? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, let's see. What do we got here? Huh, what'd you step on? What are you doing? All right, because everyone's asking to see the pup. Come here. Come here, baby. Come here. Hey, say hi. Say hi. Yeah. She's becoming a dog. It's crazy. She's not really a puppy anymore. She's in that in-between phase. Uh, okay, we got Julian Brahas. Give me a spin please, sir. So another spin for you. There you go, sir. Won yourself a small sticker pack. All you got to do is email me, info at Angry Snowboarder, and I'll get that in the mail to you. Let's see. Okay. What do we got? Uh -huh. Okay, we got BQB. Which boot brands or models have a smaller footprint? I wear a size 11. Thoughts on Adidas footprint. Why would you buy a boot company that doesn't exist anymore? Uh, it is a little narrower, but it's not. Solomon's are a little smaller. Burton's are a little bit smaller. Certain ride models as well are a little bit smaller. So, um, you know, big thing is making sure that you find a boot that fits your foot and fits your needs. Pray to the altar of snowboarding. Pray to the altar of snowboarding. Okay. Four by four therapy. Camber Nitro Team Board All Mountain. Opinion. It's the team is kind of like a do all everything twin ish. Because I think it's directional. I think it's got a little setback. Oops, sorry, dog bumped the table. Um but yeah, I think it's it's a little you're being bad. You were being a bad dog. Um out. Out. Go. Come on. I'm trying to work. Someone's got to pay for your food. Um but yeah, so it's kind of like a do all everything, jack of all trades, twinish board in there. I actually just asked for them to send me one, so I'll hopefully have it in another week to test. So um We'll see how it goes from there. Let's give you a spin of the wheel. All right. You know the drill. Email me if you want that small sticker pack. So, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. 
All right. Uh... All right. Who wants me to talk about Kevin and his Nidecker thing? Because evidently I've had everyone hitting me up about that bullshit. So I'll tell you what. Let's, uh, let me start a little poll here. And let's see what we got. There we go. Put up a little poll for you guys. Get to vote on that. I'm going to take some more questions. Okay. Uh, let's see. MJV14. Any advantage to the camber disc with the washer on the Union Atlas, particularly for hard charging and not getting loose like many discs do sometimes? I use clear nail polish, but still worry. I wouldn't worry. <laughs> like, it's a marketing gimmick. I didn't notice any difference with it when I wrote it. So there you go. Um, okay. Fruit Poop Loops. Deafen all the sound clowns. That's been... Fire Cures All. Okay. All right. Wow, you're oblivious. I'm um, not even going to take that question. All right. Uh, let's see what we got here. All right. Let's see. Where were we? I feel like I'm missing some questions here. Do, 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 do. All right. All right. Okay, S2000, guys. Some Googling tells me optimal snowfall for Steamboat is late January. Sounds early. Thoughts? Uh, they usually get hit right at the end of January, start of February with a storm, but then it gets super cold. Like, I mean, catastrophically, like you're going to, like, get leprosy cold. And it... Uh, it sticks around a little bit more, but it's super light, and then it gets crusty and scraped off. March is actually the snowiest month in Colorado. you got to remember that. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, Fresh Rancid. I want to build two-board free red quiver. Have the orca. Love it. Want something for big mountains, drops, charge, but don't want to bring my A-game all the time. 20th anniversary, Black Snowboard to Death. That's last year's one. So, yes. Yes, that's a great one. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, okay, we got David Black, David off Black Diamond. You hear about the big snow fire? Thanks, Jersey. Oh yeah, big snows over there. Like we're a real resort. We burn in the summer just like you. And now the East Coast is like, fuck, we can't snowboard again indoors till November. It sucks. It really sucks. Spin again. No shit. Well, sir, you won yourself some goggles. Goggles. You won some goggles, sir. You know the drill. Email me, info at Angry Snowboarder. I think you're a VIP member, so I can definitely double check that. Get your name and I'll send that to you. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh. <sighs> do, 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 do. Okay, where were you? All right, fruit fruit slips. This spin is for your doggo. Spray skews. <laughs> Hashtag spins for Baroness. Fire cures all, like mainly her farts. Okay, uh, let's see. Hmm. 
Antonio Escaro, thanks for giving me a heads up last time. I think I'll go for a Solomon dance hall. Saw it on your top five party board list. Weigh 76 kilograms, 152 a good size. Trees pass side, hit jibs and butters. Yes, that's the side you want. Okay. Let's see. Where were we? We got JJ Livingston. Just unboxed my brother's new Marhar dark side, and it smells like celery. Be right back. Hunting celery scented hot wax. R.I.P. L. David's window. <laughs> Well, lick the board and find out if it's got celery salt on it. The world wants to know. Next non super chat gets a spin. And since we're talking about Marhar, um, we're getting ready to give away this custom one off 152 uh, lumberjack. So uh, we're going to be coming up on Angry's Day of Giving, where I give away a bunch of snowboards and we do a bunch of stuff to raise money for Shred Foundation and whatnot. So we're going to be giving that board away soon. So um, I got some stuff in the works right now. I just got to make it through uh, the next couple weeks just to get caught up on a few things. And then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, but we got next non super chat gets a spin. Yeah. Let's see. This is an easy one. True love forever is smoking, sending you anything to review. Does smoking even make snowboards anymore? I feel like they make tables. That's what I've been seeing lately is they just keep posting pictures of tables that they're selling like no they're not sending anything they don't respond to emails don't order a board from them because they're probably going to take your money and you're not going to see it for eight months like just just ignore them for a while lose a turn Brandon Tauscher, shout out to my daughter Madison on her 13th birthday keep spraying those skiers always spray skiers Next non super chat gets a spin. So where were we? Let's see. Okay. Colwyn, uh, some nostalgia and shot in the dark. I've got a 2010 Omatic suite in great condition that I found in the attic. Any thoughts on these or what modern board uh, would it compare to, if any? Um, the suite was Andreas's model, I think. Realistically, I think the suite was their meat and potato board. I don't think it had their BS technology to it, which was their slight bevel and shit. Um, I'd be more surprised if the sidewall didn't explode on that thing. So... The Omatics, one of the biggest issue with them was they didn't put enough rubber dampening foil between the edge and the sidewall so that like people would impact like barely on anything and the sidewall would completely separate. It was a whole factory issue. I discovered it and I remember telling Jason Keynes, the board designer about it, and they were able to catch it at the factory and found out that like the factory was skipping corners on uh, to make the product so they'd make a higher profit um, on there. So... Yeah, that that was a whole thing. So I'd be really questionable if uh, if that thing's safe. <laughs> Woo! Colin, win yourself a small sticker pack, sir. So you know the drill. Email me info at angry snowboarder with your mailing address, and I'll send it. And I will send stuff international. I'm not a little bitch about that shit. I'll suck it up. Granted, the U.S. Postal Service will probably take like 47 weeks for it to get there, but I will send it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Where were we? Uh, let's see. I feel like I missed a few here. Okay. Um, We got Moo Cow looking for a doggo spin. <laughs> Well, got yourself a small sticker pack too. Good thing is I just made a whole crap load of stickers this past week. So I just cut a whole bunch. Okay. Uh, we got Andrew Hernandez. Angry. My road trip has brought me to Colorado Springs for a few days. Any good local shops to check out? Any shops carrying size 14 boots? Thanks. Spin for slip. I don't know. I don't fucking go to Colorado Springs. That place is a meth hole. Like, I don't even know what's down there. I don't even think there's even snowboard shops. There might be like a Christie Sports and a Ski and Golf for all I know. Size 14? I don't know. 
you got this magic thing called your phone. It's got the Googles and you, you search it and call around. Like, I, I have no idea, man. Colorado Springs is awful. I don't, I don't go near that place. RIP to L. David's window. Rest in peace. May someone break their leg on his stolen skateboard. Okay. Uh, we got Francois Siguan. 23 degrees Celsius today. Hopefully we get a huge snowfall in December. East Coast has had weird weather the last few seasons. East Coast is going to continue to have weird weather because of climate change. Fire cures all. Okay. Where were we? All right. Uh... E60, I hate skiers and their tight, well-fitted clothing. They're fashionably fascist. Eat your muscle cheese and punch them in the throat. Uh, Bryson Hubert, have you talked about the new Sims Insta ad making everyone butthurt? I haven't. So if anyone didn't catch this, they put out a parody ad of an old Plan B or whatever ad where they listed a whole shitload of pro snowboarders and they're like, this is our team. And then in very fine print, it was something like, not everyone on here actually will ride for us ever or get a pro model. So people were like, whatever. But I think they had like Mueller on there and a gasser. Um, they had a bunch of names that I was like, wait, don't they ride for a different company? And I actually had the copy of Slush magazine that it was in. And I like opened it and looked at the bottom of it and was like, oh, okay. I talked to a few friends of mine because I thought it was just really, really super weird to begin with. I mean, let's be real. I was talking to my friend and uh, fire cures all, but I was talking to my friend and he was like, you know, in four years, the Sims that we have right now will probably be owned by someone else. And it'll be a completely different Sims because, you know, it's been passed around more than that snow carny chick that never left back in 93. Like that's, that's true. That's like, you know, that that's what that brand is. Uh, do, 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 Okay. Okay. Good one here from Michael Cooling. Avrin, as a progressing intermediate rider, my goal this year is to really dial in my turns to get those high speed pencil thin lines. Why do you think so many people look over turning to learn tricks? Because that's what they see. They see freestyle snowboarding and they think I can go do that, but they don't understand the fundamentals that lead up to that. And this is why I'm a, Firm proponent of mini pipes at every resort, like a good 12 to 14 foot pipe, because that teaches so much edge control and it teaches you how to balance and do everything in there. But it was like when I went to Big Snow this summer, I literally watched a kid try to 450 a rail that couldn't skid a turn. I was like, did he? He did. And I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, wow. But no basics for turning or anything like that. It's funny, like when I run into park rat kids up here and I start talking to them, because it's, it's a small community and stuff. And you can spot the ones that are going to have good style versus the ones that you're like, they're going to be gone in a year or two. And it comes down to how their their edge control is and their ability to turn. Like two of my favorite guys to watch right now are um, Phil, uh, Phil and Kyler from Underground. So at, at Phil My Tank and uh, at Kyler Berzins, um Burzins, something like that. But those two guys uh, have really good edge control. And when you watch them ride, you can understand it. Or like my boy, Kobe, um, at Cobra Snaker on Instagram, you can watch his videos. You can see his edge control with how he butters and everything. And that's such a huge thing. Like edge control is so important in understanding that nuance of how to flex the middle of the board through the back foot and the tail, but while still engaging the front is, is key. Like if more people would just spend a season learning how to turn and turn well, their freestyle game would up itself so much. So. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Looking for some stuff. Okay. Jeff Sprague says it best. Turning is the sickest trick. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, 
anyways, I think we kind of caught up on questions. So I'm going to take this super chat from Alex. Uh, oh, God, here we go. Reka, Reka, Halaka, Yeah. Uh, compare Pentaquark versus Cafe Racer. Thanks. Okay, Pentaquark's more damp. It engages a little bit differently off the front foot than the Cafe Racer. The Cafe Racer with its camber profile is really a center to the back type of board for steering, where the Pentaquark is more engagement off the front through the middle and then the tail of it. As I said, it is a damper ride. You can actually push through crappier snow easier on a Pentaquark than you can on the Cafe Racer. I mean, I literally own a Cafe Racer. I wish I owned a Pentaquark. <laughs> So let's let's just put it that way. All right, sir, you won yourself a medium sticker pack. So you know you got that going for you, like a like a like a like a ricky ticky tabby. So yeah, okay. Uh. Okay. Ugh. And of course, we got this one from E60. Video idea, top five kooks of snowboarding. A bunch of you are probably actually subscribed to them. I'd put myself on that list. Fuck. I'm a kook. <sighs> okay. All right. We got 112 votes to talk about Kevin from Snowboard Pro Camp and Nidecker. All right, we're going to end that poll right now. All right. How do you make an irrelevant brand even more irrelevant? That's the story. Like, Nidecker... So here's the crazy thing. I want to talk about this. I don't know if people understand how much Nidecker actually owns as a brand of snowboarding. So, Nidecker, Battalion, Lobster, Switchback, Flow, Rome, Jones, yes, now, nine brands, nine big brands. So think about that. So they own about 60, 65% of snowboarding. Yet, how many people that ride those other brands can even tell you who Nidecker is, even though it's the oldest one out of all of their portfolio? That speaks volumes. Now, they've always had an identity crisis when they've tried to come into North America, and they've botched it over and over again. At this point, I've watched it be botched, I think, like three or four times. This will be another catastrophic failure. And this comes down to the fact that you're literally putting your hands in your social media marketing to a guy that bought his subscribers. And you can see that because how do you have 500,000 plus subscribers, but you can only get 30 to 50 people in a live stream? I understand at 20,000 having 130 to 200 people in here at any given time. I think the best I've ever done is like 280, 300. And that was right at the day of lockdown where I was just trying to like sort everything out and give people information. I get it. I'm not saying I'm an interesting guy. I'm not. I'm boring as fuck. But people watch me. Okay, so now you're going to put your hands and your marketing into the hands of this guy, right? And snowboard pro camp. Motherfucker can't bend his goddamn knees. If he would just bend his knees, I wouldn't have that problem. I mean, I agree. It's good. Go teach the beginners how to ride. Do that because, you know, you fucking, that's what you are. You're a segue for people that snowboard that aren't snowboarders. They come in, maybe they learn a thing or two. Albeit really bad, they get really shitty advice, and then they move on because they find someone else. Okay, fine. Now, I know how much product I move globally. I can see it, by and large, on a lot of websites that I move it for. Nidecker is not even a top 25 brand for them. Okay? And they make some good product. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like, I really do like their boards, the way that they ride. They, they have... Some really good stuff in there. Like the sensor is really cool. It's a little butter stick. Uh, you look at their carving stuff. I mean, I know that they revamped them. I've been trying to get some new stuff from the local rep here and whatnot. And they they have it. They have the technology. They have the know-how to make a good product. All right. Now you're going to 
basically tell what guys you have on your team. Well, you're not important. This guy is because he's got 500,000 followers. I could buy 500,000 subscribers. I think it would probably cost me like 2,500 bucks. I could do it. Will I? No. Because I'm built, not bought. So you go into that with that idea, right? And they think, they see that 500,000 and they're like, well, if a third of those people buy boards, we're going to sell a ton. You know what? Kevin's fan base watches him and then comes and asks me for boards. And am I recommending Nidecker? Not really, because they don't really send me stuff. When they do, yeah, I will. But by and large, they're a forgettable brand. And, you know, so you, you, you look at it this way. I get it. They're trying to do it. Now, Kevin's whole thing being like, I'm the first YouTuber to be sponsored by a brand. You're not, dude. I used to be. I used to get hookup. I mean, I literally still get hookups from companies. I've had companies tell me that I'm sponsored. I'm like, I'm not sponsored. Like, I differentiated that. But if you're really going to go that route, I was like, okay, there's Torstein. There's all those guys that are true, actual pro snowboarders. This is an ego stroke for him more than anything. And, you know, the fact that he's like, oh, we're going to be pushing Jones product too. I want Jeremy Jones to watch his content and see when he does bonehead shit, when he's talking about going out of access gates, riding through blast zones in Whistler where they're actively blasting avalanches, riding over crevasses at Hintertucks where he could fall 180 feet to his death because they got fresh snow because he doesn't understand that that's a fucking crevasse because he's fucking clueless. He's going to get someone killed. And I would love Jeremy Jones to put him in his place because I, I've said it before. I think those guys are going to get someone killed at some point. I'm talking Andreas, Chris, Kevin, Buckhouse, TJ, all of them at some point are going to do something to get someone killed. I've seen it. Janice, all of them. Casey's a little bit better. And when he does stuff, we can usually wrangle him in. Like Casey and I are friends. Like we were friends long before this YouTube thing. I wish people don't understand that about me and him. Like we used to have Thanksgiving dinners together and shit. I've known Casey for 10, 12 years, you know? So... Um, so there's that and, uh, go, go, sorry, dogs being a little pain in the butt. She's, she needs attention because she's seven months old, seven and a half months old. It's almost eight months old, but so, so there's that. And this is a whole big thing with this and good for him, man. Go get your fucking nut. This is what you want, but just understand, man. You are a person that snowboards. You will never be a snowboarder at this point. And you're fake as fuck. And the rest of us can see through it that have actually paid our dues. I mean, that kid's a fucking idiot. So I guarantee you, we're going to get a video this year that's like, these boots are the best boots. And it's going to be a Nidecker boot. And then he'll talk about how he's riding some Nidecker binding, which they revamped their binding. So they're actually like, I want to ride them because they actually look good. They look better than what they used to make. And we'll see that. And he's going to push it. And maybe he makes some sales for him. Is it At the end, is it going to justify the selling out of Nidecker to go at this route? No, it's not. It If anything, it hurts the relevancy of this brand. Because if they came in to like any of my shops that I work with here, they'd look at it and be like, who? And then they'd ask me because they know I'm on YouTube. And I'd be like, oh, that guy's a fucking kook. And they'd be like, we'll take Yes. We'll take Jones. We'll take Rome. We'll take Battalion. We'll take now, you know, we don't want anything to do with your, with that brand. And they've essentially labeled themselves a completely uncool guy brand, which sucks when I see a brand do that, because there's a lot of uncool guy brands that make good stuff like Rosnell snowboards, not Rosnell bindings. I could go into a tangent on how bad Rosnell bindings are, but Rosnell boards are actually good. Not a cool guy brand in the slightest, you know, um, but you see these things. And, you know, this is an ego boost for him and he's going to sit there and stuff. But, and, you know, he's like, I finally fucking made it, dude. You don't own a house in the mountains. I don't even think you got a season pass to Whistler this year from what one of the local guys was telling me. Um, hey, don't climb under that. Come here. Good girl. Uh, and uh, the, it, it's one of these things. Like everyone always is like, you're just jealous of him. This is the argument I always get from the fanboys. I could give two fucks about how big his audience is or that. What I have a problem with 
is the stupidity that he perpetuates and it becomes cyclical. And then there's this generation that just has bad fights. Like, did anyone watch his how to carve video that he turned the white balance up so you couldn't see that he was skidding turns? He purposely jacked his white balance so it blew out the snow so you couldn't see that he skids his turns because he skids his turns. I remember one the one time I met him at Copper. And he's a nice guy. I'm not, not saying he's not a nice guy. I, I don't I just don't like him because, well, I, if I don't like someone, I just don't like him. But it's not, it's just that he's fake. And I remember it, it, it was like, I thought we were going to go make some laps. And he was just like scurried right away. And I was like, oh, you're scared. Like, I'm not a good snowboarder. I am fucking horrible. I own the fact that I suck at snowboarding. Like, but, you know, the one thing I can say, I got a pro model before him. <laughs> this is actually, actually, technically. Oh, go, 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 shoot. Good girl. Um, technically, it's this one. Nate from Marhar made this custom one up for me. I don't really consider it a pro model, even though I did design that board from the ground up with the idea of how it rides, the shaping and everything in there. All he's going to do is slap a graphic on an existing board. It's because he doesn't have that skill set to understand how to build anything up <clears throat> and whatnot. So it's, it's whatever at this point, like the stupid people that snowboard that follow him are going to eat it up. The two fanboys that follow him around to Europe that are, I don't know if they're investment bankers or trust funders or whatever, they, they're going to eat it up. Everyone's going to eat it up and they're going to sit there. And there's this weird divergence that YouTube helped facilitate because there was this weird gap because real snowboarders were like, oh, I don't want to do the YouTube thing. And so these people came in and they just existed and they were at the right place at the right time. And it's like this weird separation of universes where you like have the snowboard universe and then you have the kook universe over here. And I'm like somewhere in the middle and you look at it probably a little more towards the kook side, but uh, you look at it and you're like, oh my God, the algorithm favors these idiots making shitty content, shitty riding, pushing shitty products and i'm like this blows my fucking mind every fucking day i like walk around and i'm like what the fuck is this how does this exist but because they make forgettable daily content because that's what it is it's not evergreen content it's forgettable and they get promoted and this is it and kevin finally figured out a way to find some brand that would give him free product because he feels that everyone owes him stuff and i saw this with buckhouse like buckhouse reached out to a to one of the local rep force accounts here to hit him up because and his argument was, well, I'm on YouTube and I will push people to Amazon and that will bump your sales. Not understanding that my local reps make jack shit from Amazon sales. All their money comes from in store. So you basically were barking up the wrong tree, but he felt entitled to get free stuff. Okay. I've gotten a lot of free stuff. I do not deny that. I'm very grateful for it, but I never expect it. And my new thing, because I'm in, finally in a really good position to do it is, hey, can you just direct me to a shop that I know is going to have it? Or I'll just walk into my local shop, the Underground or Gravity, and I'll just buy it. Like, full price. Like, the Union Force review that I did, I bought those to review them. The Union Atlas review that's coming out, I bought those to review them because I couldn't get some to review. And I gave away those atlases, and they got stolen in the mail. So then I had to give the kid another set of bindings. That sucked. But... And these guys just want to take. And now are you going to see Kevin giving away a snowboard pro camp snowboard? Maybe, which would probably be the first time he's ever really given away anything other than a shitty beanie or something like that. Like you never see these guys giving back, you know, they just take and take and they want to take. And then they want you to be like, they, they want to be a celebrity. That's what it is. They're not good enough to be a true pro. So they want to be like some kind of dealist celebrity. There's nothing cool about that. It's like, You know, you're the coolest guy with Down syndrome at this point. I hate to pick on people with Down syndrome, but that's what it is. Like that saying. And it's, uh, it's just, it's just so like uh, frustrating because you see it. 
Like I've done this. I've lived, I live snow. I'm not like I chose to like show up one day and was like, well, I kind of like going to do it. And now my mom's going to pay for me to live in the mountains. It's like, no, I just fucking went and did it. Like I can remember being like 17 years old. What are you going to do after you graduate high school? I'm going snowboarding. And everyone's like, yeah, but what, what are you going to do? And I was like, I'm going snowboarding. That was it. That was literally my answer was like, I'm just going to go snowboard. I'll figure it out. I always have. And it's to me, these guys, I'm like, you know, like hearing from people I know in Whistler and stuff, they see Kevin show up and he'll spend 20 minutes walking around the corral trying to see if anyone will notice him. So he'll get his adulation and stuff. And I'm like, meanwhile, I'm like standing around like no one see me, no one see me, no one talk to me, no one talk to me. I'm just going to put my headphones in and just gone. You know, uh, that that's who I am. Um, but because of that, you know, it's like I'm going to do legit meetups for you guys to like come and ride or I'm working with underground here in Breck because they have a crew, a demo fleet. They have a Jones demo fleet. I can get other reps, demo fleets that they sell. And what I'm thinking is on Saturdays, certain Saturdays, I'll, I'll let you guys know ahead of time, but the goal is to go and set you up with demo equipment to go out and ride. And then I'll be there for a couple hours, talk with you, do whatever, set you up, go out, ride. And then we'll meet up at happy hour at a restaurant. I'm working on that too. And we'll sit around, just shit, shit, talk snowboarding, just have a community chat, you know, and do shit like that. That's one of them. That's one of the things I want to do. The other one is like, like I said, these meetup days where we go and ride and I'll be like, Hey, this time frame is going to be for this level of rider. This time frame is going to be for this level, you know, and try to make it so everyone can go out and ride and just have fun, have a community, man. Like the old days before cell phones and, broadband god dial up was awesome back in the day but um yeah this whole kevin thing like it's an ego stroke that's all it is to him good for you dude pat yourself on the fucking back you fucking bought enough fake fans and you made enough shitty content that a company recognized you that was irrelevant and thinking that they're going to get relevancy i feel bad for guys like my rep here, Greg Oakley, I feel bad for him because he's going to have to now explain this to shops and be like, well, we got this guy. This is how we're promoting our brand. Or my friend Dale Rayberg, who was a pro for ride snowboards right when they first started. Think about that. Dale back in the day. And he's the West Coast rep, you know, and Dale's got like legit roots. He's done more for snowboarding than Kevin ever will. And, you know, and now he's like, well, this is how we're going to sell Nidek around the West Coast, I guess. Good luck. So, you know, this is, uh, yeah, it's a weird time. I mean, it's just, it's pathetic. And at the end of the day, it's just sad and pathetic. They think they're going to move more product. Like, legitimately, if they wanted to move more product, do more cool projects. You have Tim Humphreys riding for you. Promote him. Do more with him. He does so much stuff with GoPro. He, he's the king of understanding how to film with a GoPro. I don't care what anyone says. He truthfully, Humpy is the guy that really knows his shit when it comes to it. And he's the guy that they could probably actually build a YouTube channel around and do, but they didn't for whatever reason. And it sucks because he could bring in more people and they could actually do something with it. Instead, you're going with straight need sloppy ass 360s to not even the knuckle. He hits right before the knuckle on every jump that he hits because he's so stiff when he spins. I'm stiff because, well, my spine and back and knees and everything are fucked. I don't spin. I spun one day last year. I had a good day where I didn't get dizzy. 23 concussions will fuck you up. But it's, it's, so it's like this whole thing where you go into this and you look at it and you go, still going to be irrelevant. And, you know, he's going to get a bunch of free product and they'll probably send him to Europe or whatever, and he'll suck off one of the Nidecker brothers again and give him an old rub and tug in the back of the train or whatever. And and that's what it is. And the other thing is it's the marketing people that are working over at Nidecker Europe. It's a bunch of old ex White Line fucks. Like White Lines is a horrible publication. And a lot of the people that have worked there over the years, I've come to the conclusion are fucking retarded. Just retarded. Like there's no other way to describe it. So now they've got these people in this position. This is what happens. Posers somehow always get themselves into a position where they're like marketing or team manager 
or some shit. And I'm always just like, how the fuck did this person get a fucking job? They suck. They suck. And then you sit there and you look at it and you go with it. And so, yeah, it's, it's this whole thing where you're just like, whatever. Cool. Maybe that, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he'll, he'll sell tens of thousands of boards for him. It'll be the, you'll be walking around. But would I, would I look at it like, it's going to be like when Sierra Snowboards was the thing and they had their forum and they had their Sierra Rocker and a few other boards. You're going to see those boards. You're going to see Nidekers with those types of people. They're the same people that would have bought a Giltzen. They're the same people that like Rur Rock. They're the same people that have the, the Buckhouse sticker on them. Like, those aren't people you want to talk to. They're flat earthers. They're QAnon supporters. They're anti-vaxxers. They're dumb. They're functionally illiterate people. So there, I, I, I feel like I'm starting to go in circles. So we're just going to call it on that one. And uh, yeah. So, okay. Where were we? Anyways, if you got questions, put them in the chat. I'm going to try to take a few more before I dip out of here. I got to take the dog for a walk and stuff. And uh, yeah. So anyways, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with things right now. Like, in all honesty, I don't give a fuck. If Night Ecker tried to sell, send me Kevin's pro model board, I probably wouldn't review it. Because I'd just be like, no, I'm not giving him any credit. Because watch, he'd probably choose a board that was actually good. I'd like it. People would buy it. They'd attribute the sales to him when realistically it's me doing the review. It's kind of like how Curated basically shows all my videos to their staff and tells them, like, this is what you should be like when you talk to the people. And it's like, no, they don't have that fucking thing. Like, ugh, curated. There's another one I could go on. Like, fuck. So, whatever. Okay. We got a good one here from Michael Kulig. With the success of the dance hall, do you think Solomon might switch to radial side cuts on some of their boards, such as the Huck Knife and Assassin, which tends to have problems on hardback? God, I would hope so. I would hope that they would do this because holy shit, holy shit, that would be amazing if they did that. Okay, all right, uh, let's see. Uh, Okay. Aaron Reed, will you review the 2022 Kilroy twin from Burton? Just purchased it and can't wait. Thoughts? You bought it. What do you care what I think? Go ride it. Fucking have fun. Uh, I'm trying to get some Burton stuff, but that's probably not going to happen until the end of November, December. Like they're harder to get. Uh, I got to talk to a few different shops and see what I can grab from their demo fleets. Plus a lot of stuff's demo fleets aren't going to be showing up on time. Uh, for the start of the season, like some stuff isn't showing up till like the middle of December. And I'm just like, uh, I'm like 35 days away from riding 2023 stuff. So yeah. Okay. Cole Binning, best bindings to pair with a second year LibTech Orca, but is versatile enough to be paired with a stiffer all mountain boards. Can't afford two sets of bindings this year. So Bent Metal Transfers, Burton Cartels, you could do the Rome DOD, the Ride C8. Like, that's four options right there for you, bud. So, hopefully that helps you. Um, okay. Also, I've really got to talk about this YouTube channel because I don't think a lot of you guys know about it. And this comes from Bobby Critelli. WoW is the best YouTube snowboard group. So it's the world of weird. They're these Japanese guys that do, they make like Rube Goldberg machines with their snowboards and like how they edit stuff. And they have like themes, like fucking phenomenal. I love watching this shit because it's just so weird and you're just like, it's so fucking creative. So yeah, uh, world of weird. Check it out. Um, uh, okay. Jillian Barajas, Dylan Bagley, you missed the laser show last night. What the fuck? Sounds like somebody's getting called out. <laughs> Reverse spin again. RIP to L. David's window. RIP. 
Okay, we got Carl Bryson looking for a binding recommendation on his GNU Gremlin. Okay, so I would look at like the bent metal solution. No, not the solution, the Core Pro. Solution will be overkill or the transfer right in there. Uh, if you want a little stiffer, Cartel X or regular Cartel. If you're going to go do, if you want something that has customization to make it surfy or a little more drive into it, the K2 Lean AT. And I'm also going to throw out the Ride A10 as well. So you got a few options there. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, and we got our boy Carlos Enriquez down in Aspen. What's up, Averin? Thank you for sending over those heel straps. I'm looking forward to trying them out. Yeah, it only took me like a month and a half to find some heel straps. Um, if anyone's got like medium, large or large, extra large Rome katanas, black labels, and I think the vice, cause I think they all have the same, uh, heel pads. I've got the 2.5 degree cants. I got like three pairs of them, one for a large, extra large, and then two for the medium slash large. If anyone wants those, just email me and we'll work out like PayPal me like 10 bucks for shipping. I'll send them to you because I'm never going to fucking use them because I don't use camp pads. But uh, Carlos needed some uh, black label straps, but he wanted the new ones, not the old ones. And I had a set, so I sent them to him. Like, this is what I'm talking about, community. Like, I just, you know, I just sent them to him. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's try to work something out there. So, And remember to eat your muscle cheese. Uh. Okay, let's see. Oh, and this is something else I wanted to talk about before we get into it. The season is coming, people. So, like, before the season starts and you're fumbling around, go put your boots on. Make sure they fit. You know, make sure you haven't broke your foot or it's gotten wider. You got cankles or something. You know, do that. Check your insoles. If you got stock insoles, get them out of there. Get some fresh insoles in your boots, you know, if, they, if they're just feeling beat and whatnot. Get that in there. Go check all the screws on your bindings. Make sure there's no surface rust on the edges of your boards. Take some steel wool. Get that off of there. You know, if you put storage wax on your board, it's time to freaking heat it up, scrape it off, get it ready, wipe it down, get the dust off of there, dump out any of the squirrel food that they're putting in there because they're hiding for the winter. You know, like check your shit. Go through, check your gloves. Make sure they're waterproof. They're not ripped. Go check all the seams and zippers on your jackets and pants. You know, look at that. Check your goggles. Make sure your lenses are all good. All that fun stuff. So, yeah. Just just make sure you check all that stuff. So, okay. Okay. Uh, NLS insoles. How to narrow down arch support height and millimeter thickness without buying a few hundred dollars worth insoles. Take your stock insole out of your boot. Stand on it and see how much it collapses. Like measure the height before, before you put any weight on it, then step on it and make sure you got your knee over your toe and, and then measure how much it's collapsed. Then measure the actual thickness of the footbed, too, to make sure it's relatively close. Now, granted, most stock insoles are just a cheap, shitty piece of paper. Um, I don't think I got any in here right now. I was moving them around earlier. Um, but, yeah. So make sure you, you check that and stuff like that. And then you want to just see that. Also, like, see in the stock insole, how far your arch goes forward. Like if you obviously go a little more forward in your arch, you're probably going to want a different insole than something that's got like a high arch or a low arch or whatever, vice versa. It's all personal preference, but you want to make sure you know where like the length of your arch is. Most of them actually talk about like the length in there and stuff. And one of the things you can do if you have a really long, like long arch is you can actually upsize the footbed the insole that you're getting and then trim it down because it, so you got that longer one because it's got that longer arch because it's designed for a longer foot. Um, I'm actually redoing a whole bunch of the boot fitting 101 videos too. So yeah. Um, okay. Adam Lowe, any tips for a beginner? Wear 14s and picked up a 163 wide skunk cape. How fucking big are you? You goddamn Sam Squanch. Holy shit. 
Um, okay. First off, for beginners, don't stick your hand out when you fall. Straight forward. That's how you break a wrist. Make a fist, fall on your forearm. All right. Take a lesson. Stay hydrated. Eat a banana. Stretch. Don't flirt with the snow carnies. That's how you get the clap. You don't want the clap. It's very key in there. And the other thing is check yourself before you wreck yourself. I love beginners that are like, I can skid a turn. I can go to the top of the mountain. And I'm like, oh my God, no, you can't. Uh, one of the last days I rode copper last year, I watched a guy and a girl. They were like literally still falling, leafing, kind of getting turns. And they're like, we're going to the top. Do you want to get on with us? And I was like, no, you're going to fall. I'm going to get on this six pack chair by myself. We won't fall. We know what we're doing. Chair swings around. Fucking, they eat shit and fall getting on. Stop the chair. They load them back up. I'm sitting there and I was like, I told you so. I was like, you're going to fall getting off. We're not going to fall. They fell getting off. And I was like, and now <laughs> the easiest way down is 2.1 miles of cat tracks. And they have no ability level to be there. And they were like, what's the best way for us to get down? And I was like, get on the chairlift and ride it back down. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Oh, God, this fucking question from Hunter 1138T. Hey, Vern, I love the channel. It's helped me a ton, but I'm curious why you don't do riding clips with board reviews. Okay. I have... 65 days to ride sometimes about 150 product. Two boards a day. So I've got to go out and ride on top of everything else that I do in life. And you want me to go out and find someone to film me or I've got to ride around with a pole in my hand. You know who rides around with poles in their hands? Fucking skiers. You know what I'm not? A fucking skier. I fucking hate skiing. I fucking hate holding that thing. People are like, no, it doesn't change how you ride. It does. Because now you've got this dynamic with this hand in front of you or behind you, and you're not able to use that to counterbalance, especially because I'm a very handsy rider. Like, I will do 360 push-offs, lift towers, shit like that. I will lay my arm down when I'm carving, things like that. So I won't do that. Now, one of my favorite arguments that people give me, I just ask one of your friends to write. Okay, I tell you what. Go ask one of your friends to film you and see how hard it truthfully is. But don't tell them it's like, oh, film me a lap or two. Be like, I need you to film me all day. What, so I can make some bullshit edited, super hyper edited version? Like you're talking about taking four times the amount of work that it would take to put that in there. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I go up, I ride the board. Sometimes I ride them for an hour or two and I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I'm on that board for six hours and I have to go put it through its paces. On a powder day? Okay, it's a powder day. It's negative 10 degrees. That GoPro battery? probably going to last about 20 minutes. So you're swapping batteries in there. I've got arthritis in my hands. I don't want to get my hands cold. It's kind of how this goes with that whole thing. So it's like people are always doing that shit, stuff like that. So one, hard drive space. Two, time to film, stuff like that. It's like I have bad days. Sometimes it takes me two hours to warm up. And then I spend another two hours riding. Like, so that's four hours. You want me to go drag someone around? It's like, my friend Kobe said it best. He was like, and he goes, don't take this personally, but no one wants to fucking follow you around and film. And I was like, th th thank you. Nobody does. Like what? I got to pay someone like $45,000 a year to, to fucking follow me around. That's what it would cost. I mean, you're literally talking about it. it it's not something I want to do. And I love these people that are like, oh, it's so easy. You can just set it up. If it's so easy and you can just set it up, why the fuck don't you do it? All of those people that try to tell me how easy it is have never fucking done it. Trust me, I've filmed guys that used to compete at due to her. I know what it means to go out there and stand around fucking trying to get a shot or trying to line something up or trying to do something right. It's not how it is. It's not how I do things. It's not it. Plus, I very much live in the moment when I ride. Very, very much. I don't want my phone out. I don't want my GoPro out. I want my music in and I want to fucking ride. Now, Dave, my moderator, he's ridden with me. He knows what it's like. When I say it's go time, it's like I point and I make hand signals and that's it. I don't talk when I'm riding. It's like, I just want to go fucking make my lap. That's how it is. 
I want to live in the moment. So many people are like, we should film and do everything. Influencers in the wild. That's what you get then, people. Do you want more influencers in the wild? I don't. That's it. I want to live in the moment. I want to be able to be like, hey, okay, cool. I'm going to do this. That Now, with that said, is there a chance that I might do something in the future? Yes. But right now, with how I'm doing everything and where I'm trying to get things, it is not conducive to how it is. And for everyone that says I can't fucking ride, come out and ride with me. The offer is on the fucking table. And if you want, I'll push the fucking button so you can see what it's like when I'm really pissed off and riding versus how I have to tone it down with people when I'm riding with them. That's how it is. I don't want to do it because it takes too much fucking time. And that's where it is. So, yeah. Okay. Let's see what we got here. We got a super chat from Carlos Enriquez. Would last year's Burton process pro pop camber be a good fit for a beginner? What the hell is that word? Mid, mid midite looking for overall progression. I mean, it'll work. Wouldn't be my first choice at all for a beginner. Like I feel like it's going to be like a harsh learning curve. Like, wouldn't you be better off going with, like, an instigator camber or something from Burton? So. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Uh, okay, let's see where we are. Mr. Force 10, are the Burton Cartel admissions comparable? Well, I mean, one's like a base model Toyota Camry, and the other one is like still a Toyota Camry, but with all the luxury perks on it. It's the way to look at it. Basically, like the mission is meat and potatoes. It'll get the job done, but it doesn't have any bells and whistles. And you, if you're really aggressive, you'll push right through it. It doesn't have that much power, whereas the cartel is a true workforce, which actually I just filmed the top five workforce bindings for 2022. So that top five will be coming out too. Uh, Uh, Brian P, do you have a set run method for reviews? Yes, every resort. So I pretty much test it to your resorts. It's either copper or a basin, and I know them both. But so, like, let's I'll go through the copper run for you guys. Get on either Center Village or last year because I had to park in the peasant lot. Fucking, it was get on Super B, take it to the top of the mountain, get off Super B, head hard right, drop through the cat, through the goat path, drop down, go through the gnarly switchbacks of doom, pop back through, get about 10 minutes of tree riding, pop back out on a hardcore groomer, rip a bunch of hard carves, cut back over on a cat track, three good side hits, plus two little pillow poppers, cut right past the park if, if it wasn't a park day. Shoot right over, take Timberline up, get off Timberline, shoot back over, get ready to take it to the backside, go out the gate, ride a bunch of pow, smash that, come back through, do a couple laps through. Or if I really wanted to, I'd go from soup, top of Super B back to Center Village the long way around. That's two point, I think it's like 2.8 miles or something in just the first lap of the day. So that with a basin, the first lap of the day, it's pretty much get off. Uh, the pally chair, go to the right, go under the pally chair, take wildcat down through the cat tracks and stuff like that. It's basically the same run you can see on Can Kevin Carve It. And then I take it to Lenaway and I go up Lenaway and then I head to the backside, hit some wide open pow fields if there's pow. If not, there is a Mach 10 groomer with a giant step up roller that you can hit. Just point it into that thing and see how far I can send it out to see how damp the board is. You're never more than like four or five feet up in the air, but you go out, you can go out like 10 to 30 feet, depending on how fast you hit it. And so that's always good. Then I go back up to the top and rip a groomer down, do a huge Euro carve after the big signage right below the east face wall, 
rip that around, head into their dinky ass little park and pray that I don't hit a screw and just rip a bunch of carbs. But yeah, I have like very set runs that are very consistent so that I know where everything is to try to hit the same stuff. I mean, obviously snow consistency changes every day. So you got to take that into consideration, which is why you guys get told what the conditions are, like what I was dealing with and stuff like that. And plus, I mean, you can be riding and it can be pockets of sun to clouds in the spring and snow can go from fast to slow to fast to slow. So there is that, but yeah, I have very set runs just like when I'm in the park at copper first. So I get off the Woodward express and it's two hits in the mini pipe. Then there's two little dinky baby jumps that are maybe like three to five feet. And the goal is to send them as far as you can. So you treat them like a lawn tramp. You purposely overshoot them. And then there's a hip that I do a carve on. And then there's a slow sign that I'll do a tap revert on just to see ride switch back into Peace Park. If it's good, if Peace Park isn't good, then I go into Center Park. But I go into Peace Park, hit a few jumps in there, hit a few jibs, hit a couple banks, snow turns, and kind of do that. I do that lap like probably five to 10 times in an hour just to see. And then I'll do a bunch of free ride laps just to kind of push it to its limit. But yeah, there is very much like I'm going here, I'm going here, I'm going here, I'm going here. I'm going here. I'm going here. Powder days. It's like I'm not blowing out my pow spots, but I have specific lines that I take too. So. Oh. Dan Rao, how are the Eldora Woodward parks? The jump line is absolutely sick from what I've heard from multiple friends. I've never made it down there to it, but it's basically just like a condensed little Woodward park. It's like just a little pocket. I think it's, there's three jumps, varying sizes, uh, and like 15 jibs, but it's consistent enough that you can do it. So, yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay. All right. Michael Kulig with the PSA. Watched at home with the homies at lunch today. Stoked for the season. Sick music in it as well. Yeah, don't forget there is a mystery link down below. Click it. Should stoke you guys out if you're looking for some snowboard stoke. So. RIP to L. David's car window. Whew. That's a rough one. Ooh, okay. Ronald Newman, what one binding do you recommend for a Capita Mercury, Solomon Dancehall, and K2 Party Platter? I'd go with the K2 Lean AT. It gives you the most customization out of anything. So with the pods and the heel block, you can pull the heel block out, put it on the the dance hall and get really surfy in your turns, put it back in, put it on the party platter, maybe swap out the pods if you want to. And that'll give you still a party board feel. And then you can just leave everything in it, put it on the mercury and charge. So. Chesh saying, what binding would you recommend for somebody who likes to do a bit of everything like butter, hit the park and carve Rome vice, so do the Rome Vice, K2 lineup, ride C8, and uh, I'll just give you three options in there. Oh, well, fuck it. And the bent metal action. We're going to throw that in there. And, and while we're at it, we'll throw the Nitro team. So there's five. Captain Rusty Beard, why doesn't Burton sell replacement bootliners? Have you tried contacting the Burton customer service? Because I know you can get them from them. I've seen it done. So. All right. Anyways, uh, I think we're slowing down here. So I'm going to take this. Uh, this is Super Chat from Jesus Freak. Thank you for the sick goggles, bro. Just what I needed for the Bluebird days. Music in a jam. Fuck yeah. That is the only way to ride. So, yeah. Uh, he previously won some goggles on one of these Super Chats. Actually, it was the very first time he ever Super Chatted. He won a set of goggles in one of these live streams. So, 
stoked for that, dude. Glad you got them. Um, you know, Davidoff's going to get today's goggle wins. Um, I've got a big day of giving coming up, uh, multiple prizes and stuff, I'm working on some stuff. So that'll be coming out soon. So. Well, sir, you won yourself a medium sticker pack. You know the deal. Email me info at angrysnowboarder.com and I'll uh, drop those in the mail for you. Let's get those down to Arizona. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Anyways, guys, I'm going to call it a day. I got some stuff I got to do. I got to take the pup out. I got to do a bunch of other things. So, thanks again for tuning in. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not going to miss any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us so we can do more projects, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. I could tell you more here. Got a video over there that kind of explains it a little bit better. So check it out. I'll see you guys next week in a live stream for sure. And obviously you'll see me tomorrow in a video. So thanks again. Have a great day.